and general manager Al Avila, manager AJ Hinch, and left handed pitcher Eduardo Rodriguez. Additionally, we have some special guests joining us this afternoon. We'd like to welcome Eduardo's family to Detroit, including his wife, Catherine, his children, Annie and Ian, and his niece, Dubraska. At this time, we'd like to present them with a small token of appreciation and officially welcome them to the Tigers family. We'd also like to welcome Eduardo's agent, Gene Motto, to Detroit. Where does his flowers? <laughs> also, also joining us today are Senior Vice President, Chief Marketing Officer, Emily Neenan, Vice President, Assistant General Man Man Manager, Sam Menzen, Senior Counsel, Baseball Operations, Alan Avila. This time I'll turn things over to Al Avila for some opening remarks. Well, good afternoon and thank you for being here on this very exciting day. As I mentioned on this very stage, at the end of the season, we hope to be back here soon announcing the addition of, uh, of impact talent to our major league roster. And today brings just that. Um, and before we get going, I'd like to thank Chris Illich for being here and providing the necessary support, not just for this signing, but in multiple ways throughout the baseball operations that's driving our ball club back to a winning franchise. I'd also like to welcome Eduardo's wife, Catherine, Annie, and Ian, right here, and, um, and just say how much we're looking forward to many, many years here in Detroit uh, with, with you and your family. It's going to be a lot of fun. And lastly, um, um, I'd like to welcome uh, Eduardo's agent, Gene Matos, who we've had a, a good working relationship for many years. Uh, Gene, if you remember years ago, also represented um, Annabelle Sanchez. So uh, we have a good long lasting relationship here. Uh, welcome, Gene. Um, and uh, afterwards, um, I'd like to mention that, uh, you know, we're obviously very happy here to have Eduardo, um, you know, represent the Detroit Tigers. Uh, it was just shortly right after the World Series, I reached out to Gene and we started talking about Eduardo being a Detroit Tiger. Um, he expressed interest right away that uh, Detroit was a destination for him for sure. He was uh, very positive, very bullish on, on, on Detroit uh, and our organization, as well as AJ. And, um, and shortly thereafter, we started talking on a regular basis. And, um, and then AJ and I uh, met with Gene and Eduardo, and, and we hashed this out. So um, many thanks to, to Gene, uh, Eduardo, for his um, desire to be a Detroit Tiger and uh, AJ here for, uh, quite frankly, uh, helping me do the recruiting and um, which we've had a lot of uh, traveling lately yeah, together. No, <laughs> we've been- No pictures. We've been no uh, pictures. coast to coast all over the place. So anyway, um, and with that said, uh, again, uh, thanking Chris Illich, I'll just turn it over to Chris. Well, thanks, Al. Well, what an exciting day to be back here again at Comerica Park uh, to welcome Eduardo and his wife, Catherine, and. Uh, children, Annie and Ian, welcome, and welcome to the Detroit Tigers family. We're very excited to have you all. Um, you know, Eduardo is going to play a, a key role in continuing uh, the process towards delivering winning baseball to Tiger fans in the city of Detroit. You know, we had tremendous uh, step forward in the 2021 season, and adding a pitcher the caliber of Eduardo is going to continue the momentum that Al and AJ and our coaching staff and all of our players have going. Uh, there, there's a lot of Tiger talk going on right now, and, and the fans that I talk to are very excited and energized about the direction of our ball club. So excited to be here today to welcome Eduardo and his family to the Tigers. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Eduardo for his remarks. That was my time. Is your time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, first of all, I want to say thank you for, um, I mean, for giving me the opportunity to be here. Um, Alex and, and Hinch, just for, for, I mean, go to Miami and we had that, that meeting over there. And then you guys see how excited I was to, to sign with you guys to, to, be part, to be part of this club, you know, to be part of this organization that I know 
had a lot of history and they're just hungry to win more championships. And that's what I want to be part of. You know, I want to be part of the other championship teams for the next couple of years, you know. Um, like you say, Jim, um, thank you for the help for, for make this happen, for make this dream happen to me. Just come to Detroit. Uh, my family, my kids, my wife, my daughter, I mean, my son. Thank you guys for being here too. This is one of, I feel like, the best days of my life, just have this kind of contract and have this welcome with all you guys here. Uh, it's just, for me, just get here, uh, go to Lakeland, start spring training it, get ready for, get ready for next season, you know, and, and like I say, do my part to, to, to win a championship as much as I can, go out there every five days, do the best for, uh, give you the opportunity to win some games every time I can, you know, and, and I can wait to get to know all my teammates down in, in Lakeland and I'm going to start knowing all of them and they know, they know me and, and be as a family and be part of that family that you guys, you guys already had together. And I just want to be part of it. Awesome. Thank you, Eduardo. Mm -hmm. Now ready to take questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand and we'll get a microphone to you before asking your question. Um, please identify yourself by saying your name and affiliation. Also, if you're joining us on uh, also, please specify who your question is directed to. Um, finally, time permitting, we will take a couple of questions from the media joining us today via zoom. If you are on Zoom and have a question, just please use the chat function and uh, put a note in there. Like I said, time permitting, we'll try to get to as many as possible. Um, we'll start with Chris McCoskey. Thanks. Chris McCoskey, Detroit News. Welcome to Detroit, Eduardo. Thank you. Um, I wonder, contract aside, um, what were some of the things, because you had a lot of interest in you from other teams, obviously Boston wanted you back. Um, what were some of the things other than the contract that led you and, and was attracted to you, Detroit? Um, I will say history, um, see the fans here. I mean, they, they love uh, the fans here, uh, the baseball they play here. Uh, I will say uh, one of the, the special team was Miggy. I will say that because we're really good friends and he, he started explaining me everything about Detroit, about how, how is everything here and all that. And, and he gave me a love with the organization and, and with the team, you know, and, and now I like to be part of it. Thanks, Chris. Matt Shepard. Uh, Matt Shepard, Valley Sports. Welcome and uh, happy holidays to you. Eduardo, uh, from afar, how did you notice Detroit differently last year than maybe two seasons ago? And then for Alan AJ, after he's done, what about his makeup on the field and in the clubhouse is most enticing to you guys? Thanks. Can you, can you say my question again? Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, from afar, as you watched the Tigers play this past season, how much different were they and how much did that play a factor into your decision? I mean, I faced I faced in for the last what six seasons already. I've been facing I would say six seasons. Uh, I've been facing a lot, and and I've been seeing the process and and the different different they would they they've been making. I mean, year by year, a lot of young guys, a lot of new players, and they started they, they started like controlling and, and growing up until like a championship team, and that's what I want to be part of it. That's why I decided to to come here and be part of the the growing team that they they started making here. Yeah, so I mean, for us, Eduardo is a huge addition to our to our rotation. You know, we 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 said early on we had to get the pitching right, and this is a step in that direction. And um, it's because he's a winner. You know, you just at the bottom line is he's a winner. When he goes out to pitch, he gives his team a chance to win, and which is what you ask every five days. So um, if you look at what he's done, his track record, how he goes about it, um, his pure stuff, his competitiveness, his um, you know, durability, his, his ability to miss bats. He gets soft contact on the ground. Like there's nothing not to like about him. Um, and so he, you know, he comes in and immediately improves our rotation that, that we're really excited about. So once we met with him um, and you start to learn a little bit more about the person and a little bit about more what makes him tick, um, we weren't getting out of that restaurant without, without landing him. So it was a good, uh, uh, a good a good marriage because what he does well is exactly what we preach you know what we preach we feel like we can unlock a few things to make him even better thanks up uh jason beck eduardo welcome to detroit i, I was you. wondering when you pitched here against the tigers i think it was in august it was right around the time that there was some buzz going around miguel cabrera's chase for 500 home runs what was it like watching that atmosphere and did that kind of um, make an impact in your mind as you were trying to think about where you were going to pitch next? Um, 
I will say when I pitch it, I think he was, uh, he needed like two more homers, something like that, two or three home runs. And it was funny because it was me and Martin Perez uh, pitching in a back to back. And we know, like, we just, we just talked to him. I know we love you, bro, and everything, but this is part of the game. I don't, I don't want, I don't want to be the fight hunter, you know what I mean? And, but, uh, but I remember that really good that we, we juggled with him all day, all those days, you know what I mean? And I pitched the first day and, I told him you to hit a homer of me, and I just told Martin the next day, "Good luck, bro. Don't don't give it to him, you know." So, but um, what was the other part of the question? Did you say just the first of all was that, that atmosphere right? then, around the ballpark? Oh yeah, I mean, were pitching did did that kind of register with you when that season's end? You had to try to figure out. Yeah, just watching. Just I mean, and I've been watching post seasons here playoff. I've been watching a lot when I was in the minor leagues. You know what I mean? And and I know how it gets here when you get to the postseason. season. I've been, I've been watching all the time, you know, on, on TV, especially on TV. And then when, when Miggy was getting close to the 500, I uh, see the atmosphere here. And, and I want to be part of it. I want to be part of the, all the postseason here and, and see all the fans and, and how they get here. What will it be like to be a teammate with Miguel at this point? And also, I imagine, have a close-up seat as he gets to 3,000 hits. Uh, I will say it's going to be fun. <laughs> I will say that. Jason, Evan Petzold. Yeah, Eduardo, Evan Petzold from the Detroit Free Press. Um, you know, just how seriously did you consider returning to Boston? How seriously did you consider maybe Toronto? And what was kind of the tipping point that led you, you know, to sign with the Tigers over those teams? I mean, like I say, I see, I see everything they have here. I see uh, the way they start reconstruct the, the team, uh, start getting ready for complete for championship, you know, and and part of it was, like I say, the history, uh, Miggy, and asking about everything, about the organization and all that. And and I want to be on, on a team where, where they, they start going up until uh, they want to be a championship team, and I want to be part of that. I mean, I want to be part of that reconstruction and, and join them and, and play with them and, and help them the best, the best I can, you know. So that's why I decided to come to Detroit. And then question for AJ, too. Just what are your expectations for Eduardo as you try to blend him in with the pitchers that you have here now? Yeah, I mean, we just want him to be himself. I mean, obviously what he's done speaks for itself. Um, you know, for him to pitch the way he's pitched in the postseason, we got to get to the postseason. I um, mean, he can help pave that way. But, um, you know, really, we're, you know, it's like I told him in the meeting that we talked about him. If he's, you know, as a, as a leader, as an, as a, as an experienced pitcher, um, we are going to look to him to, you know, to show us the way in a lot of ways. In other ways, if he wants to be vocal, be vocal. If he wants to be quiet, be quiet. But take that ball every five days and, and give us as much as you can, as long as you can, and, and give us a chance to win. So um, he doesn't have to do anything more than what he's done, you know, up to this point on how he prepares and how he, how he you know, shows up every five days ready to pitch. So, uh, but we look for a lot of innings and we look for quality. That's why we signed him. Thanks, Evan. Uh, Larry Lage. Um, questions for Chris and Eduardo. Uh, Chris, with, you know, the labor questions that are out there with baseball, uh, can you talk about your commitment to, not take a wait and see approach and invest in a, a talent. Um, and, and for Eduardo, how thankful are you that, you know, you found a team that was willing to make this kind of commitment with, you know, possible work stoppage coming up here shortly? Well, I think first, your first question, it's really a credit to Al Avila and his staff. Uh, they did a lot of preparation through the month of October to really understand what were the needs of our ball club heading into free agency period in the off season. Uh, as well as what the marketplace was. Uh, so they were ready and prepared from day one. And, and I think um, that preparation really led to the activity that we saw uh, by our ball club early on in the off season. Can you say my question again? I want to hear again. <laughs> Just with, you know, the, the labor questions that are in baseball right now, to have a team willing to make this kind of commitment to you, how thankful are you to have it out of the way, you know, while there's still questions about, you know, the players and the owners uh, reaching a deal? I mean, for me, I'm not ready to make a deal. I want to play with, I want to play with Detroit. So uh, I just want to see, I just want to see what happened. And until we, until, until we play baseball, I'm going to be ready for play with Detroit. So that's, that's what I think about that. You know, it's just, it's just this, their decisions, but I'm ready to go out there and pitch when we start playing, you know, so we'll see what happened. Jeff Seidel. Jeff Seidel from the Free Press. Chris, a few months ago, you said that the resources would be there and you've now signed a catcher and a pitcher. How committed are you to bringing in an elite short slap? Well, again, like you said, I've said it multiple times and you just mentioned it. We'll have all the resources we need as a ball club to ensure 
we continue to improve and ultimately to be a playoff contenders and, and World Series champions. And that's our goal. And so, um, you know, Al has had a plan from day one and he's been executing his plan very, very well. We've uh, invested a lot of resources beginning of this plan uh, off field, as you know, we've really developed the state of the art analytics team um, under the direction of Jay Sartori. And uh, we've, we've also invested in our player development system, our, our facilities, um, as well as our scouting uh, personnel to, to go out and find the very best amateur talent out there, bring into our organization. So we will continue to have the resources available to execute our plan uh, toward our goal of ultimately competing toward a World Series championship. Go back to Chris McCoskey. Eduardo, this is, I'm sure you, you have grown tired of, of answering a question like this, but every time we read about you going back, it's always, you know, he tips his pitches. He's had a problem with tipping his pitches. Is that, is that kind of gained a life of its own? Is that a myth or is that something you feel like you've kind of figured out and got under control in the last couple of years? I mean, I feel like at the beginning of my career, I was tipping a lot, I can be honest with you. Um, and you can see the difference because sometimes I was throwing a person's pitch and the guys was just a speed on it or make a really good contact open and all that. But I feel like by the years, I've been learning how to control the point. I mean, on the hard way, but I've been learning how to do it. And I feel like I can really fix all that, you know, and even... Even now, I know I know how to like. Sometimes I go out there and play with the with the hitter's mind, you know. Just oh, he's tipping, and I know what he thinks I'm tipping, and I just do it the wrong way or the other way, you know. So gets swing on the miss on the pitch is right in the middle because he think he think it's a it's a it's a fastball and it's just a changeup, you know. So he just um um I learned that way. I learned that way. Somebody told me you're tipping, told me how I'm tipping, and I just go and start playing with the hitter, you know what I mean? And I just do it like that now. You know, also just pitching in this ballpark. I mean, you had great numbers pitching at Fenway, mm -hmm. which, you know, it blows most people's minds. You're not supposed to have good numbers like that as a left-hander mm -hmm. there. Looking, I know you pitched here before, but this has got to be a whole different animal for you to see all that space out there. I mean, I feel like for me, um, I mean, the way I think is no matter where I pitch, you know, it's no matter where the, the ballpark would have pitch or all that. For me, just go out there and, and try to throw six, seven or eight innings every time I go out there. Even if it's uh, the biggest ballpark on the league or the smaller ballpark on the league, you still got to go out there and pitch, you know, so. Just go out there, get three outs, go out, get out of the inning and go back go back to the dugout, go out there, three more outs, and that's it. No matter where you pitch. I mean, I'm, I've pitched on time in Houston, and I get a, I get a easy pop on, and it's a homer. You know what I mean? And I pitch some with outs, and it's like it's like a way deep, and, and it's just somebody cutting the ball in the outfield. So I feel like it's no matter where you pitch, you got to go out there and get and get three guys out, you know? But I know I had a, I'm going to have a really good hill over here with this ball per so... <laughs> <laughs> Bob Wojnowski. Yeah, Bob Wojnowski, Detroit News. Um, Christopher, over here in the middle. Um, obviously, this is a big step in the rebuilding process, not the first step, and I don't think it's the last step. How more aggressive can you be with the labor, as previously mentioned, with the labor unrest possibly looming? Can you still be aggressive going forward in this offseason, or do you have to wait until that's settled? Yeah, you know, I, I think... Um... It's a good question for Al, but I would tell you, Wojo, um, you know, again, Al's going to have the resources that he needs uh, to go out and accomplish what he thinks, you know, we need to accomplish in the off season. He and I talk about contracts and different contract scenarios quite often. And, um, you know, we've got an open mind uh, to any, anything is, is really on the table as it, as it goes uh, regarding that. Having said that, we also want to be uh, make sure that what we do going forward allows the organization sustainable success uh, over the long haul. And so we need to keep that in mind. Evan Petzold. Yeah, question for Chris, just to follow up on the last two questions here about the shortstop situation. You mentioned sustainability. I mean, how, how do you feel about a $300 million contract going out? I mean, is that something that you're going to let Al do or that's going to be a, a part of the plan or no? <laughs> Well, again, I would why, why just keep it at 300. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, I, I would I would defer to Al in terms of, you know, what he and AJ uh, on field and Al as our general manager believe our organization needs to accomplish uh, our goals and to execute our plan. Again, the resources are, are going to be there. And, and I know Al 
And uh, uh, AJ and myself are all very aligned on making sure that when we talk about contracts and new contracts through free agency uh, or even trade, uh, that we, we need to be mindful that our goal is not to be um, good one time, but to be good over, a court, over the course of time. And we really are shooting for sustainable uh, success in competitive baseball over time. And so we're gonna be mindful of that as, as we look at contracts uh, going forward. Thanks, Evan. I think we have a couple of questions uh, from the people joining us on Zoom. Uh, we'll go first to Cody Stavenhagen. Yeah, Cody Stavenhagen of The Athletic. A uh, question for Eduardo. Just given where you were at in 2020 when you missed the season after having COVID, how good does it feel to sit up here and, and know you have a five-year contract? Um, I will say it feels really good. I mean, I can feel more happy than I feel right now that I just signed a contract. My family is here. I will say nothing can feel better than this, you know, and you're talking about the uh, 2020 and, and, and this season and this past season. And I feel like I'm glad to have the opportunity to to go out there every five days and be, be available to go uh, 30 plus stars this season. I've been asked that everything I've been through uh, um, with Kobe and all that. So I just, I just feel happy with everything that happened to me right now, you know. Also a question for AJ, you took this job uh, just a little more than a year ago. What does it mean to see Chris and Al continue to, uh, to kind of live up to the promise and now you're up here signing a, um, an established pitcher? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, you know, we need to continue to make progress and take, take leaps forward. I mean, we want to win. And that was said at the beginning uh, of my time here when we sat down for dinner and, and when they offered me the job and, you know, it's been constant communication. I think that's, one of the things that, that probably doesn't get talked about a lot is the is the amount of time that Chris and Al and me and, and my staff and Al's staff and we we're all trying to get this right and we need good players to do that and this is a great step in that direction when you can um, we were at our best last season on a team on a season that was very um, successful in its own right but not successful in the standards that we're going to have moving forward um, we were good when our pitching was good. When we had good starters, we felt pretty good. And the next day starter and the next day starter and the following starter. And you're rolling out Mize and Manning and Scooble and Tyler stepped up and did his thing. Willie Peralta did his thing. Eduardo's now going to do his thing. Like that's how you build a winning season. Um, so Eduardo come in for me, it, it shows that, that, that people outside this, this club have an understanding of where we're going. Um, Cause the people inside this club, we've been saying the same thing internally um, since the first day that I've been on the job. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Cody. Uh, we'll go to Julian McWilliams. Hey, Eddie, what's going on, man? Um, you, you obviously spent a lot of years in, in Boston and just wanted to, you know, get your, your thoughts on, on as you reflect on the years there. And, you know, obviously you came into your own there. Just, just what was that experience like and, and as you reflected over the last week or so? I mean, I will say, uh, and I'll say what up, bro, again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, after the play, I've, I've seen, I feel like I have a really good time with uh, with Boston. You know, I mean, really good uh, every year that I played there, winning the World Series, which is was a special for me. Uh, every playoff game, everything I do over there, uh, my teammates, um, John Farrell, Alex Cora, the managers that I had over there, everybody. Um, but for me, I feel like now it's time to move on, man, move on and go to the next uh, next part of my life, which is which is, is what I'm starting to do right now. Um, which is going with the Tigers and start winning championships over here. So that's the way, that's the way I see it. And that's the way I like to leave it for now then. And was there, was there any thought or really thought for you to, to when you can had to, was there any thought to, to go into the qualifier offer? Did you ever really consider that? Oh, what? Say it again. Did you really ever consider the qualifying offer that, that Boston laid out for you? I mean, do you want to change? Uh, I'll be going to be honest with you. you. Do you prefer 18 or 77? 77. 77. <laughs> I mean, I'm honest with you. No, 77. I got you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, just, I mean, uh, just thinking about me and my family, man, that's why I, uh, <laughs> uh, be on that part about money. It's just like, just thinking for me, my family, my future, my, my two kids, you know what I mean? Uh, um, so, but, um, another way was just like, I know was a lot of teams out there that, uh, that, uh, that they wanted me to sign, uh, with them or there was, there was, uh, um, on Instagram, you know, I mean, they're discussing, uh, discussing a contract and all that, but 
after I talk to Miggy and I start and see what Detroit is, uh, what Detroit is all about, um, I make the choice and decide to sign with them. Thanks, Julian. We'll take one more for Zoom. Uh, we'll go to Alex Spire. Eduardo, good to see you, man. Um, you are too. In, in terms of in terms of uh, of this contract, were you concerned this season, given that it was kind of up and down and that it was coming off of uh, the lost season last year? Uh, were you surprised at the level of interest that you found in, in free agency that a team was willing to go to five years? Did you did you see that coming? And you know, and what what kind of talks did you have about the with the Red Sox about how far they might be willing to go, how many years they might be willing to sign you for? Um, I will say I know I'm no surprise that uh, that um, that the interest in that I have from from the teams and especially for the Tigers. Because I mean, I, I go out there every five days, you know. And when you go out there every five days and do the best you can do, I feel like a lot of teams gonna be gonna be looking for you, you know. I mean, and and I would tell you guys all the times that it was in Boston. I mean, I just like to go out there every five day, pitch, um, do the best I can for help the team to win the games, you know. And and that's what I think is what the uh, what that's that's the way I see it, you know. I mean, go out there every five days, and 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 you're gonna get uh, people uh, people attention, you know. And the other what was the other part? The last part that you saying? Um, you know, Sorry. the fact that the, the Tigers did go to five years, how far, you know, what, what sense did you have about how many years the Red Sox were comfortable going to? I mean, like I say, I, I was a story in the teens that it was Indian Chino, Eastern Chino, me, and, and the, um, I mean, uh, I'll, I'll come to and talk to me, you know what I mean? And they had the offer. I like it. Um, and I don't feel like, like I'm going to wait more longer than that, you know, and they have it. Like I say, I studied the teens that I was interested in me and, the Tigers was the one to decide, and I'm just happy to be here. Um, with respect to the Rexers, I'm, I mean, I don't feel like I don't talk to them at all. It's all about like how many years and all that. I know there was, I know they want me back then, but like I say, uh, it's time to me for me to move along and, and start my new the new part of my life and win the championships here. And with regards, you know, you talk about your excitement of joining Miggy. How hard was it to talk to Xander about leaving Boston? <laughs> I mean, I feel like Xander, Devers, uh, Baski, uh, those are the, the three guys that, uh, that I've been played my, my whole career over there, especially uh, Bogey and Baski, because Baski was catching me every five days, every time over there. You know what I mean? Those are the two guys. Bogey was in short start every time, getting mad on me because I throw the wrong pitch or I throw the, I throw the right pitch. Or sometimes I was getting a dugout and he told me, wow, well, how you – how you can paint the backdoor color right there, you know what I mean? Things like that. And that was a perfect pitch, madness, happiness, and everything that I passed with those two guys. Um, I mean, it's just it's just different. I mean, I feel like they're, they're brothers that, that you never forget, you know. And I can't wait. I can't wait to go out there and face them next year, see what they can do, you know what I mean? Because uh, one of the funny things, we, we're talking a lot together. Um, Basky just told me all the time, I'm going to hit a homer, I'm going to hit a double. And Bogars too, and I told them all the time. And next year, when I face you guys, I'm gonna strike you out. So we'll see. We'll see how that how that goes this year, uh, next season, you know. But I know, I know, I love them, and I feel I've, um, they they. I know they feel happy for me. They feel happy for uh for what for what I accomplished now, and and I know they want the best for me, and I still want the best for them. And and they go out there and bowl, you know. What I mean, and and I strike them out all the time. I face them. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. Uh, we'll take two more from the audience here in Detroit. Go first to Matt Shepard. Eduardo, two-part question for you. You just mentioned Miguel Cabrera. Uh, mm -hmm. Players want to play with other great players. So Detroit trades for Tucker Barnhart. They bring you on. How can you help recruit additional players here? And what can you teach the young, talented pitching staff of this Tigers team as you embark on your Tigers career? I will say with the young pitching staff, I will say go out there. In the spring training and I start uh, teaching them what I learned from um, from the older guys, you know, what I mean, the, which is uh, play the game the right way as a pitcher, go out there every five days or reliever, be ready every day. You know, what I mean, things like that, you know, what I mean, a lot of things going to come up uh, as soon as we get to the spring training and I'm going to do the best, the best thing I can do for help then, you know, what I mean, I'm open to any questions that you have for me about about whatever on, on baseball part or even on a family ways so or like how to how to baseball and everything, you know, what I mean, I'm, I'm open to to help then. And to help everybody that they bring to the table, uh, for me to help, you know, that's that's the way I see it. That's the way that's the way I learn. Uh, especially guys like I learn from guys like Price, Sell, Ebaldi, uh, Porcello, guys like that, the, that they teach me the right way to do it, and and that's the way I'm gonna teach uh, young kids to do it, you know. 
I mean, uh, who will say that's, um, that's his part right there? That's his part of doing it. I mean, whoever he brings to the table, like I say, I'm going to do the best to, to help it get better. Even if it's a guy that is older than me, I know I, I I learned the way that even the guys that are older than you, you're still going to help them. You know I mean? You still, sometimes you get, you sit with them and sometimes they have questions for you that they don't know and you help them, you know I mean? Young guys, old guys, I feel that's the way, that's the way you're learning. That's the way it is. And that recruiting part, I feel, I feel like it's all on, on my partner over here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, you know, basically by trading for Barnard and signing Eduardo, that in itself is a recruiting tool uh, because it shows, you know, other players that we're, we're here for real and we're here trying to win and, and trying to bring in the best players and, 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 and build a winning franchise. So just the, the player movements that we've done so far um, is a recruiting tool for in itself. Um, not to mention, I, I think I have the best manager in baseball. That's a great recruiting tool. He's been traveling with me all over the country. So, uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, so, you know, that, so that, that, that should answer your question there. Um, but yeah, the players are engaged. I mean, Miggy's engaged. He'll call whoever we need to call. I know Eduardo the same way. Um, players talk to each other all the time. And, um, so, you know, and they're just, the message is Detroit is a good place to play. Thanks, Chef. Uh, I'll take one more. Mike Stone. Yeah, Mike Stone, 97, won the ticket. Uh, speaking of other players, AJ, um, since uh, the photograph of the world's most famous brunch uh, became public <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, obviously fans are very excited with the possibility. I don't, I don't know what you're allowed to, to say or whatever. Is there interest from Carlos to consider Detroit heavily? And what was this, you know, your... Yeah, no. So breakfast into lunch. Yeah, How did that I deal? mean, I had a ham and cheese omelet. I didn't order lunch, so it was only breakfast. Um, <laughs> and I, I didn't realize it was uh, as big a deal as it was He's having a baby, delivering a baby gift. So there's, there's, a, there's a lot to like about players out there, and we're trying to get better. And so, obviously, we can't really discuss the, the specifics on things. I'm going to let people speak for themselves. So if you want to call these guys, you can call whoever we've, we've, we've talked to. Um, but we want winners here. And we want to win. And that's the reason that we're here today and signing this. It's the reason that we made a transaction on the first day of the, of the off season um, and getting Tucker Barnhart. There's more conversations to be had. There's a ton of interest in coming to Detroit by a variety of players. And that's because I think people are aware that, that our trajectory is going in the right direction. So great conversations, not just the one that was photographed. There were some unphotographed ones. You guys can seek those out. Um, some really good meals Al and I are sharing. Um, you know, the most successful one to date has been the one that's sitting at this table right here signing to, to, to help anchor our staff. Thank you. That'll wrap up the uh, Q&A portion today. Uh, to conclude today's press conference, Chris Illich and Alavila will make a special presentation to Eduardo. Yes, sir. 
No hay cabida. ¿Estás seguro? All right, that'll conclude today's press conference. Thanks again for joining us and uh, hope everybody has a happy Thanksgiving.